1948. December 10, 1948. The signing of the UN Declaration for Human Rights. Por su trascendencia. US First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt speaks of her hopes for this historic document. This Universal Declaration of Human Rights may well become the international Magna Carta of all men everywhere. Present is Australian Labor leader Herbert Doc Evatt. It is the first occasion on which the organised community of nations has made a declaration of human rights and fundamental freedoms and it has the authority of the body of opinion of the United Nations as a whole and millions of people, men and women and children all over the world, many miles from Paris and New York will turn for hope and guidance and inspiration to this document. Sixty years on, Doc's niece, Justice Elizabeth Evatt, stands before an audience to deliberate how far we have come in those 60 years. The Universal Declaration is the cornerstone on which the United Nations human rights system has been built. It's the primary source for all the later instruments, and together with the two covenants, it forms the International Bill of Human Rights. Justice Evatt and UK jurist Lord Bingham joined human rights advocates at the University of New South Wales to celebrate the landmark signing. This was the first international proclamation of individual rights to which everybody was to be entitled simply by virtue of their existence as a human being. Australia was actively represented in the dra drafting of all these instruments and for many years we were an enthusiastic supporter and participant in the human rights work. But in the mid-1990s, the halo fell off. Our laws and policies have failed to deliver fully on the promise of the Universal Declaration and later instruments. Our greatest failings relate to our Indigenous people. In regard to asylum seekers, the Commonwealth's immigration power has been used and can be used to impose open-ended mandatory detention. Equally disturbing is the operation of the anti-terrorism laws. These have led to unwarranted restrictions on liberty, detention without charge, to unnecessarily harsh treatment of detainees waiting trial, and to heavy-handed tactics by security officers. UNSW found another very Aussie way to mark the 60th, a football match between some of Australia's leading human rights groups, activists and refugees. The event recognises that human rights, like sport, transcends all boundaries. And the goal for all nations? To live up to the promise of that historic declaration.